Uh, yeah, I hope that you're hearing me. Uh-huh. This is the future, all about cybersecurity. Talking about the hackers, I'm just trying to warn you. From the one and only legend, the cyber informer. Hey, yeah, yeah, this is the cyber reformer. Uh, this is the cyber reformer. Let's go. It's time for the Cybersecurity Business Connect and Protect Central Coast Q&A video. I am Michael Tremblett, the Cyber Informer at Cyber underscore Informer on Twitter. Today, we will look at a form of application control which blurs the lines between antivirus and application control. Sentinel-1 is an endpoint detection and response application, and in this video, we will see why you need it in your business. Let's go. As part of application control, we'll have a look at a software product that walks the line between application control and advanced antivirus. Whilst Endpoint Detection and Response, or EDR, is not strictly application control because it doesn't stop applications from being installed based on name or vendor, it prevents and kills applications that act suspiciously unless they are on an allow list. EDR has been used in enterprise for a very long time. Loyal IT's chosen EDR product is Sentinel-1, which has now become available to the SME market at an affordable price. In the past, EDR like this may have cost hundreds of dollars per workstation. The product aimed at small business is a fraction of that price. It is excellent value and consistently is at the top of Gartner's reviews for best of breed EDR. This video is rated one propeller hat out of five as it has some new concepts, but I'll try to make it easy enough to follow along. From the Team Ascend website, this is what EDR does. Once EDR technology is installed, it uses advanced algorithms to analyze the behaviors of individual users on your system, allowing it to remember and connect their activities. In the same way that you often notice when something feels off or different about someone you're close to, the technology can sense behavior that is out of the ordinary for a given user on your system. The data is immediately filtered, enriched, and monitored for signs of malicious behavior. These signs trigger an alarm, and the investigation begins, determining if it is a true or false positive. If malicious activity is detected, the algorithm tracks the path of the attack back to the point of entry. The technology then consolidates all the points into narrow categories called malicious operations to make it easier for analysts to review. In the event of a true hit, the customer is notified and given actionable response steps and recommendations for further investigation and advanced forensics. If it is a false positive, the alarm is closed, investigation notes are added, and the customers are not notified. There's a little bit to unpack here and some new terminology to consider. What is a true positive and what is a false positive? Positive. A true positive is a detection which is actually malicious and the EDR terminated the attack and rolled back any changes to the system. A false positive is a detection which looked malicious but was not. An example of this is a networked version of an accounting system a loyal IT client has running on their network gets updated frequently, and these updates are always detected as a false positive. Why? It's because the methods they use to update their software across a network looks like hacking activity, believe it or not, when, in fact, it is not. A true negative is a benign software product that was allowed to run on the network, and it was not detected as malicious. What you don't want is a false negative. A false negative is a malicious software product runs and your EDR or antivirus does not detect it on your computer or network. AV alone is prone to false negatives. Unlike EDR, which looks at learned behavior, antivirus works by the way of signatures. Antivirus has a database of signatures, which are like fingerprints of malicious software, which are updated frequently, usually a few times per day. If a product's action matches the signature, then it is detected, killed, and removed or quarantined. Bypassing antivirus is taught in hacking schools, and it can be surprisingly easy to do. For example, there is a memory hacking tool called Mimikatz, which I talked about in the Q&A video hacking case studies. Back before the antivirus companies became wise to it, you could grab the Mimikatz source code and recompile it as Mimidogs. This simple change would allow the malicious program to run on a computer without it being detected by an antivirus product. Simple, huh? This is why EDR is recommended as an additional layer to antivirus. Antivirus is the front line and EDR does a virtual pat down of anything that the antivirus determines is a true or false negative. EDR will interrogate it further. What type of threats does EDR detect? EDR protects against fileless malware, malicious scripts, or stolen user credentials. It is designed to track the techniques, 
tactics and procedures that an attacker uses. But it goes even deeper. Not only does it learn how attackers break into your network, but it also detects their path of activity, how they learn about your network, move to other machines, and attempt to accomplish their goals in the attack. You're also protected against malware, which is crimeware or ransomware, fileless attacks, which inject code directly into your computer's memory, and this can be done remotely, misuse of legitimate applications, suspicious user activity and behavior. EDR learns your network through AI or machine learning. It doesn't rely on antivirus signatures. It is monitored by a security operations center 24 seven. So if your staff click on a malicious email on Christmas morning, you're protected. We will see an example of this shortly. It can automatically roll back damage to your system, often without the end user knowing it has happened. The huge advantage of Sentinel-1 is their ransomware warranty, which you can read at the website on the screen. The part we're interested in reads, Sentinel-1 will pay as sole and exclusive remedy to the company actual damages caused by such attack, capped at US dollars per endpoint affected by a breach, and further capped at $1 million US for every consecutive 12 months in which company subscribes to the solutions with respect to the affected endpoint. In other words, if you're a victim of ransomware and you have Sentinel-1 running on your network in the default configuration, you will qualify for this warranty payout. Talk about putting money where your mouth is. They obviously have faith in the quality of their product to offer this warranty. Does your antivirus solution offer the same guarantees? I think they would be too scared to. Let's have a look at some examples from the Sentinel-1 dashboard. These are some of the threats Sentinel-1 has caught on some of Loyal IT's customer base. Reading the examples from left to right, we can see in the first column the files threats were found in. There are a couple of Excel documents, a program called Setup, a temporary file written to disk, and a program called Client Framework Launcher. The second column shows the AI confidence level, which in these cases is either malicious or suspicious. The next column is Analyst Verdict, which shows a couple of false positives and three true positives. Remember, false positives are legitimate benign programs which look malicious to the AI and true positives are actual malware. All incidents are resolved. We can see the computers in which these incidents were caught. The date and time the incident happened. Which AI engine detected the activity? We can see Sentinel-1 was reading documents and scripts. It watches for behavior and it has something called on-write static, which is a deep file inspection of files created on the system. Finally, we see which program started the malicious activity. The top two were from email. The next down would have been a double click, so someone actively tried to install a malicious program. The next was from a program called Google Update. And the last one was from another double click. Looking at more details about a particular threat, setup.exe, we can see what it attempted to do and the remediation actions. We can see that the threat was mitigated and the AI has determined it to be malicious. The program was killed and quarantined. We can see it was determined to be a true positive and the incident is resolved. We can see where the file was located, on which computer and which user ran it. It was detected by the behavioral AI on the computer and it was classified as malware. And we get information about what steps of the hacking framework this threat conformed to. In this case, it was trying to make itself auto run. So it ran every time the computer started and it tried elevating its privileges to give itself system or administrator access. In other words, full control of the computer. I know the computer has antivirus running on it. So from the antivirus perspective, it was a false negative. But EDR determined it to be malware. If you have had your business's cybersecurity assessed by Loyal IT Solutions, you would have received a report. In that report, it points out that the federal government recommends you to undertake a post-incident review process. In other words, each time that you have a malware attack, you should review why this happened and if a user was involved in the alert being raised. This timeline of events allows you to determine precisely what happened and when. We get this timeline of events. In this case, we see it was detected at 11.06 p.m. It was killed at the exact same time. And as we follow through the events, we get to the top of the event list, which we can see a person at the Security Operations Center, or SOC, reviewed the alert and ensured it was remediated appropriately, all within nine minutes of detection at 11 p.m. on a Tuesday night. Impressive. Now, if you really wanted to get into the weeds and your cybersecurity team or MSP may want to, 
you can explore exactly what the malware did to your system. This one is relatively boring. A program started and it was terminated because of its behavioral indicator. Whereas this one is very interesting. It created files, modified files, created processes on the computer, modified registry entries, and raised 1932 indicator red flags. This is an impressive piece of malware. Let's exit the propeller hat zone and wrap up the video. What do we learn? EDR works with your antivirus to add an extra layer of protection to your computers and network. We now know what true and false positives and negatives are and how they relate to malware. We saw the amazing warranty that Sentinel-1 offers its users. EDR gives you plenty of detailed reporting any IT engineer will be able to understand. EDR will allow you to conform to the government's post-incident review process recommendation with easy to access reports on all malware discovered on your network. Thank you for joining me for a look at application control and EDR software. These days, antivirus should not be the only line of defense in your business and Loyal IT will be able to help you with this layer of your defense in depth strategy. Don't forget, you can contact me via email, Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Until next time, stay safe online. Oh yeah, this is the Cyber Reformer. Hackers, you going down like, oh yeah, this is the Cyber Reformer. Hackers, you going down, yeah.